Greetings. Um, we want to welcome you to our Pediatric Infectious Diseases Fellowship video. I'm Cami McGann, uh, professor in pediatrics uh, here in infectious diseases. I was the vice chair of education here at Duke for the last 15 years and I'm very excited now to be the infectious diseases program director for the fellowship. And I want Matt to introduce himself. Yep. Hi, I'm Matt Kelly. I'm an associate professor of pediatrics and I'm the associate program director for the fellowship. I was formerly the program director and have been involved with the fellowship for more than five years now. And yeah, we're very excited to welcome you here to Duke. And we're gonna do a little tour of Duke Central Tower now so you can see our new environment. Um, we're super excited about uh, the Duke Central Tower, which is where most of the pediatric floors are now. Um, we moved in here December of 2021 and are really happy to call it our home. It's a lovely facility. But first, let's provide you with a quick fellowship program overview. Hi, I'm Cammie McGann, the fellowship program director for our Pediatric Infectious Diseases Fellowship. And I'm really excited to be able to give you a bit of an overview regarding Duke, our Pediatric ID Fellowship, and then um, some insights into Durham and North Carolina. So. So Duke University is a nationally recognized academic medical center that has superb clinical and laboratory resources coupled with an invigorating intellectual climate that is supportive and conducive to fellow training. Duke Hospital is a tertiary and quaternary center that refer receives multiple referrals. And I wanna highlight how our Department of Pediatrics was ranked number one nationally in NIH funding for pediatric departments last year. We haven't heard this year's ranking. And among the top 50 funded researchers, we have two in our division of infectious diseases, Danny Benjamin and Mike Mickey cohen wolkowitz were ranked one and two respective nationally, um, which is super exciting. We also in our department have a strong focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion because they are key drivers of our excellence. Our division is dedicated to improving the health of children by promoting excellence in the prevention, diagnosis, and management of infectious diseases through clinical care, education, research, and advocacy. And so our fellowship program's priority is to educate outstanding pediatric ID subspecialists who will be future leaders in our field and to also train the next generation of physician scientists. Our program provides an excellent both clinical and research training environment for fellows who plan to pursue either a career in clinical peds ID, in research, or in academics. A little bit about Duke and our uh, Duke Pediatrics where we live. So we have just moved to the new Duke Central Tower um, last December. We have 190 inpatient beds, 60 ICU beds and 68 NICU beds. And the NICU is actually expanding. For our fellowship, we have two fellows per year, have over 600 inpatient consults and over a thousand clinic visits per year. And then these just highlight some of the exciting activities of Duke Pediatrics recently. Um, we have a really rich history of championing many key uh, landmark activities for pediatrics. Here are some of the most recent. And then did wanna point out that our group um, enrolled the first child under 12 in the Pfizer uh, COVID vaccine study, which is super exciting. Um, so uh, let's focus a little bit on our pediatric ID fellowship. The first year is really focused on clinical training. Our fellows alternate between two inpatient consult services, the general and transplant ID teams. We have strong patient volumes on both teams and our consults really range the gamut um, and include everything from complicated common infections, unique presentations of infectious and what turn out to be non-infectious issues and questions regarding immunocompromised patients. We serve a very diverse patient population. We have a growing Latin American community here and then serve other um, populations also. Additional rotations during the first year include our microbiology lab rotation and then focused instruction in both antimicrobial stewardship and infection prevention. And I can't go into all of the unique aspects of training that Duke offers, but I did wanna highlight um, that fellows have exposure to cutting edge transplant medicine. In fact, um, we were the first center in the world to do thymic transplantation. And uh, this has recently been FDA approved. We have heart thymic transplants, cord blood transplants, and then your routine other transplants, including multivisceral that we participate in as ID consultants. Fellows are also exposed to tropical and travel medicine due to the diversity here in the triangle. And we have a robust HIV program. During years two and three, the focus is primarily on fellow scholarly activity, although they do um, see patients uh, on weekends and function as junior attendings if they want, would like to during their third year, along with fill in some other weeks to keep their clinical acumen up. Uh, they do have opportunity to work with a 
large number of mentors and have great breadth and depth of resources. The other opportunity they have is to pursue an advanced degree or courses during their fellowship, many of which our fellows have done. Um, we also have a combined ID Global Health Fellowship, a combined ID Clinical Informatics Fellowship, and um, are working on a combined MedPeds Fellowship. Research opportunities are numerous. Um, they fellows have opportunities to partner with pediatric or adult ID faculty or any number of mentors in any uh, number of different research activities. And there's also a great deal of centers and institutes at Duke that support research for both our faculty and our fellows. I do wanna highlight some of the conferences uh, fellows participate in during their time here. We have several ID conferences, including our Friday morning case conference, HIV meeting with our new um, curriculum that we've just implemented. And then we also have speakers, both our own and invited speakers that come to join us during that conference. The fellows also have a conference that goes over key topics uh, early on in the year for the new fellows to get oriented, and then also is a board review. And then just want to highlight departmental conferences. There are multiple conferences that fellows are, of course, welcome to attend. We do have a fellows core curriculum that uh, addresses many key topics, many of which are required by the American Board of Pediatrics and are tested on during the ABP exam. And those topics include everything from biostatistics, evidence-based medicine, clinical and lab research design, teaching proficiency, grant writing, manuscript preparation, um, and then other topics such as leading as a fellow, uh, professionalism, cultural competency, and um, how to bill, how to find a job and other topics. And then we have other conferences which fellows can participate in as noted here. Talking a little bit more about research opportunities at Duke that fellows have participated in, we have the ABC Science Collaborative, which was an initiative developed during COVID, which pairs many of us, myself included, with school leaders in North Carolina and then nationally, um, where we have helped uh, superintendents and others to uh, understand COVID and then to safely reopen schools for students and staff. Additionally, Danny Benjamin, who I mentioned before, has led the Pediatric Trials Network for several years. And this is funded by NIH to the tune of $95 million. And this looks at medication dosing and pharmacokinetics in children. Uh, there's also the Duke Clinical Research Institute and many other groups that you can see here on this slide. Uh, also, we have Duke Brave Kids study that looks at COVID um, viral shedding and other manifestations of COVID in children. So a lot of super exciting activities and research opportunities for our fellows. This, these are a list of the centers and institutes that we have here at Duke, um, from which many of our faculty participate in and can be quite supportive of our fellows research. Faculty um, are members of all these four at the top and have been members of some of the others. And currently we also have faculty uh, participating in the Duke Microbiome Center, among other, other um, institutes and centers that we have here. And then I just want to highlight our pediatric ID faculty are really impressive and um, participate in a large number of research activities, everything from basic science, translational, clinical, global health, and educational research. Here I'm listing some of the activities our, our faculty participate in, along with global health activities listed here, studies of the microbiome and infections and immunocompromised host, vaccinology, along with other studies. And then just a little bit, I wanna focus on our fellows research and education. Just in the last four years, they've been quite prolific as far as publications and first authored publications. Additionally, this lists the recent funding sources for many of our fellows over the last several years, which you can see are quite varied. And then we also, again, um, have the opportunity for fellows to pursue advanced degrees, many, many of whom do, um, with several of these groups, including UNC, which is down the street and has a very highly ranked School of Public Health. So uh, obtaining MPHs has been great for our fellows and particip participation in the clinical research training program has been exciting. And then I do wanna highlight uh, Durham and North Carolina. I've lived here for 16 years and absolutely love the area. It's a quite vibrant place to live. Um, do wanna point out that the Raleigh-Durham metro area ranked sixth among best places to live in the US per the US News and World Report 2022 list. Um, <clears throat> additionally, we live in the Triangle with Chapel Hill, with Durham, Chapel Hill and Raleigh, which all have universities. So we have three universities in the area. We also um, are a foodie town um, and recognized for the really exciting food, not just Southern food, all kinds of great foods. We have a lot of culture here with Durham Performing Arts Center and multiple museums. We have college sports, we have professional sports, and again, a diverse population that lives here. And the outstanding weather here allows for participation in year round outdoor activities, which is super exciting. Um, and that means we can travel to the beach, North Carolina beaches are beautiful, or to the mountains. Um, you can see pictures here of the Blue Ridge Mountains um, and and several other beautiful venues in Durham and North Carolina. 
And then uh, also did want to point out the um, just our amazing group. Um, we have an incredible group of faculty, fellows, and staff that make up our division, um, and we are part of a very vibrant and exciting department. Um, so it's an awesome place to work um, with really incredible, um, nice, bright, driven people, which is super exciting. I did want to highlight some of the benefits of training at Duke. The salary is quite competitive, especially given our cost of living is low compared to many other areas. Um, both insurance and parking are paid for trainees, and we have reasonable housing such that some of our trainees own houses or townhomes um, while they're here. We also have a great deal of learners, everything from medical students, NP and PA students, pharmacy students, and then our awesome group of residents, um, both pediatrics, medicine, pediatrics, and child neurology residents. Um, so it's really a special place to train and we're super exciting that you are considering uh, our program and hope we can answer more questions for you uh, when we speak. Take care now. And here we have our Duke Central Tower. Some beautiful art yeah. that's displayed. And here we're entering our new building, the Duke Central Tower. Starbucks on the left, and the four pediatric floors start here. And here's our uh, pediatric ID team. This is the transplant team. I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Sarah Heston. And I'm Tessa, one of the first year fellows. Awesome, and here we are on one of the general floors. We have our patient is a 10 year old with a brain abscess. Yeah, I'm still not sure exactly where it was caused, what caused it, but it's growing to be seeds. This is sort of, I guess, what I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't. I don't so, um, in the mouth, we have strep milleri, strep intermedius, yeah. and they mm -hmm. love to form abscesses yeah. and are often poly, part of a polymicrobial yeah. brain abscess. Mm -hmm. um, so, Aww. awesome. So, this is us on ID rounds in the ICU. and. I want to have our first year fellow introduce himself. So I'm Adam Blatt. I'm one of the first year fellows. I did residency here at Duke and I was chief resident last year and loving fellowship so far. Glad I have some learners on with me. And our learners? Alexis, Tatiana. Hey. Hello. I'm a second year hey. resident. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us to learn about our Pediatric Infectious Diseases Fellowship Program. Bye now.